Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hardcore series. Last episode, we we got quite a bit done. We took on this entire island, we terraformed it, and we built this giant tower behind us, which is going to be our starter base. And at the end of last episode, I told you I was going to finish terraforming the island and finish the starter base in between episodes, and I did literally none of that. The only thing I've done in between episodes that is related to this island is I have moved all of my stuff to the island. And somehow in the process it has become even less organized than it was in the stronghold. So every time we migrate, we just get less and less organized. So let's hope our last migration into the tower goes a little better in terms of, you know, sorting. But I have done some other stuff in between episodes not related to this island, because we did two streams and probably gonna be like three or four streams by the time this episode actually comes out because we've got some ambitious plans for this one but we'll go over that in a second during those streams we went on a pretty large exploration and we found a lot of the stuff that we were missing still so we have all the types of saplings now we found jungle and acacia we got cocoa beans we got bamboo a bunch of different flowers including all the two tall ones we found a lush cave so we've got all the moss blocks the drip leaf all that kind of stuff so we are kitted out also, if you're not following me on Twitch, make sure you're doing that, that way you don't miss my streams. But we did do one other thing on stream, which is fairly important, and we've got to head to the main end island for me to show you that. Up until this point, this is how I've been getting experience. I stand underneath this platform, I look at a bunch of endermen, and then I stand in the middle here, and they just all funnel into this little hole. And then I smack them with my non-sweeping edge sword, and it just takes forever. So on stream, we decided to make an Enderman farm. That way, you know, I'd have a good source of experience because we're going to be living in the end. So it only makes sense that we use an Enderman grinder as our main source of XP. And let me tell you, making this thing was terrifying and hardcore, even more scary without an elytra. So um, I think we might need to take care of that this episode. But this is the Enderman farm we decided to go with for this world. This is a design by Shulkercraft, and I will have that linked in the description down below. And as we approach, we can see all of the Endermen falling down, so we know that it is working really well. Oh, before we get close. And down to zero. But yeah, I have yet to use this farm, but I can only assume it is nice and efficient since, you know, they're all down to one hit already and I can smack them. Even without Sweeping Edge, this is going really fast. Just gotta make sure to look down. Oh, you know what? I know what I forgot in this design. <laughs> Carpets on the hoppers. Oops. So until I get that fixed, uh, XP and stuff is just going to get stuck in the hoppers, uh, so I really should try and fix that as soon as possible. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a bit of time over at the Enderman Grinder here, get all of my gear nice and enchanted the way that we want it, and then we'll jump back and get some stuff done. Also, it may be worth mentioning that as of the start of this episode, we are on day 120. So I had some not so great luck with the enchanting. I did manage to get Feather Falling 4 and Depth Strider 3 on my boots, as well as Protection 4 on my chest plate. But enchanting just the two of these things took over two stacks of lapis. So I'm done with that for now. And I moved on to something else and I started working on the island a little bit. So all of our stuff is moved into the tower, which I will show you in a second. We've got a little bit of a field out here just to get some... Uh, some food growing because we are starting to run low on food right now so you know we'll take care of that threw in a little bit of color with the lilac bushes too since we collected those on stream and we'll keep detailing this island as we go and i'll keep updating you as i do it but let's jump into the tower here look at this beautiful decoration yep that's all we did no i'm just kidding we we have the jukebox on the first floor and then if we head up to the second floor this is the enchanting floor haven't exactly finished it yet but i threw in a bunch of bookshelves and an enchanting station and i think it looks pretty cool with some glow berries hanging down but i think it still needs something i just don't know what that is yet then up here we have our storage area with the little hanging floor like i said i would do last episode and everything is now sorted into all these barrels and some chests up on the second layer here which you can access through a second ladder so yeah storage room is taken care of and the top floor is still vacant. Haven't decided what to do up here, but uh, this will likely just be decorative or something along those lines. Actually, you know what? We still need furnaces and stuff in this starter base. Maybe we'll just throw everything we don't have in these two floors in that floor up there. Or the bottom floor. One or the other. Now, I think we need to get started on those rather ambitious plans that I told you about earlier, because it is a lot to do in one episode, and I need to get started right away if I want to have any chance of having an episode for you guys next week, or when you're watching it this week. 
So what we want to tackle in today's episode is transportation, and that's going to take a few different forms. So first and foremost, I am sick and tired of running back and forth between the village and the stronghold. We need to take care of that ASAP, so we're going to set up a nether system, that way we can transport all of our goods through the nether. Also, if possible, I would like to try and set up a minecart system in the nether going back and forth between the village and the stronghold. That way I can transport all of my stuff easier rather than having to go back and forth with my three shulker boxes that I have. Number two, we need to take care of our own transportation within our world. We need to get ourselves an elytra, that way we are a little safer in the end here. If we fall off the edge of the island, we will be able to save ourselves and fly back up to the island. And we need that elytra to take on task number three, which is a bridge between the main end island and my end island out here. And I have rather ambitious plans for that on top of everything, so we're not going to be able to finish all of that this episode, but we'll at least be able to get a base bridge down in order to start moving villagers and animals over here. And in order to do all three of those tasks, we need to take care of two other housekeeping things too, so we're getting totally upgraded in this episode. We need to get our hands on three wither skeleton skulls, that way we can take on the wither and get ourselves a beacon, because the amount of stone that I'm going to need to make the bridge going between the two end islands is enormous. It is a 1300 block gap, and I'm not just making a one by one bridge. And we may as well take this time while we're in the nether to upgrade ourselves to netherite gear and weapons, that way we have a better chance of surviving the wither fight, because right now I'm 50-50 whether I'm going to cheese it or if I'm going to actually fight it on the surface like a man. Might wind up cheesing it, haven't decided yet. We'll decide later. But like I said, if we want to have any chance of finishing all of this this episode, we have to start now. So I think we should head back to the overworld and start with the nether system, because that has been driving me nuts ever since I came to the stronghold. We need to expedite that process. Why is it rainy in the end? I don't know. But those are questions better left unanswered. And since we need obsidian to make all of our nether portals, we may as well take it from one of the pillars here in the end. So we're going to completely demolish, actually no, we're not going to completely demolish it, that would take a lot of time. We're going to take a few layers off of this one. Alright, I've collected up a bunch of obsidian, so this should be enough to make both of our portals on both the overworld side and the nether side. But I realized that I forgot a bunch of materials that I'm going to need in the tower. I mean, obviously we need a flint and steel, otherwise this is going to fail right off the bat. We are also going to need a bunch of ladders, so we're going to just craft up an absolute ton of sticks here. That way we can get up and down from the nether roof and the nether floor. And then of course we need blocks, otherwise we got nothing to put our ladders on. There we go, now I think we have everything we need to go do this. So let's get it done, oh my god that's a close up of my face. Let's go, to, let's go get it done, <laughs> oh, I spooked myself. We may as well start by putting our nether portal in the uh, stronghold here and last of the obsidian, and light, and we'll just head on through to generate the portal on this side. Uh, yep, just as I suspected. A uh, crimson forest. Why wouldn't it be? While we're here, let's also grab the coordinates of the portal here. I see our destination. We are very close now. Let's sleep the night away real quick here. That way we don't have to deal with mobs while we're taking the coordinates down here. And now that the math is done, totally did in my head, didn't use a calculator at all, just go with it. We can head into the nether here and we can start heading up to the ceiling, because that is where I want to have this pathway. Also, it's very precarious doing this beside lava. Let's just go ahead and plug that up and continue our trip upwards. There we go, I'm hoping Y120 will be high enough. And now we head back down to the bottom here and head back up using ladders this time. So I guess Y120 wasn't quite high enough, but we're going to make it work. This is probably the only place where it's not going to work. Yeah, and we don't even need to go that way, so we can just block that off. And we got to make it a bit lower anyways, because, um, bedrock. So let's toss in a portal right here. And I'm thinking we do a 3x3 three three portal on both sides. And light. Now we have to head to 154 on the Z-axis here. All right, that's a little more dangerous than a cave, but um, we'll make it work. Oh man, our portal's gonna be right over the lava, isn't it? All right, there we go, 154 on the Z-axis. Now we head to negative 90 on the X-axis. And this right here is where our stronghold portal goes. And light. And now we cross our fingers that we did our math correctly. All right, this is looking good. We are in the stronghold. now. When we go back through, we're going to be on the floor of the nether, I believe, because that portal is probably going to take precedence. So um, when we go through, we got to break that nether portal and we got to make our way up to the new one. But it's in the Crimson Forest, so this is going to be fun. We're just going to go up right here. It's not exactly where we need to be, but it's close enough. There we go. We found our portal, so we can head back down here and destroy that portal. And now we head back to the other portal and we do the same. And break. 
There we go. Our nether system should now be properly set up. Let's just test out the portals and make sure. Let's test out the village first. All right, that's good. And heading back, that also looks good. Cool, let's head over to the end side now. All right, now to the stronghold. Good, and back into the nether. Also good, there we go. Our nether system is fully set up now. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time working on this tunnel, making it a little more usable, and I'll be right back. There we go, task number one is complete. We have now made our nether tunnel. We've put a minecart system down to get back and forth, but it's not looking too pretty. And to be perfectly honest, while making this nether system was at the top of my priority list, decorating it is not. So we're going to leave it, oh, hi portal. We're gonna leave it like this for now and we're gonna move on to our next thing because if I spend time decorating everything I do in this episode, this episode won't come out for a few weeks. So we're gonna go drop off all of our materials from doing this tunnel and then we're going to head down into the nether and look for a good place to start netherite mining. Because if I'm gonna be taking on a bunch of wither skeletons and the wither, then I want netherite gear and a netherite sword at least. Now comes the fun task of finding a place where we can actually get down to level 16 and start mining around for netherite, because if memory serves, there's a lava lake that way, and there's a lava lake that way. So maybe we go that way? Well, may as well just start mining and figure it out. Oh, I almost jumped in there. Okay. Yep, nope. That way is no good. So let's maybe try this way. I have a funny feeling I know what I'm going to run into going this way, but we're going to see it through anyways. Huh. We actually made it down to level 15. Interesting. Okay, well, time to start mining. Well, it took about two and a half hours, but I finally have all the debris that I need. We have 36 total, which is enough to do everything in netherite. So I guess that means it's finally time to place down a furnace in this base. We will place them down alongside the anvil here. And then we can pop these on into the furnace, grab all the gold we need, and toss down our smithing table. Hmm, while all this is smelting up, maybe I should get a less garbage enchantment on my helmet. Let's see what we roll on it. Uh, of course. Yeah, that's not gonna do. Maybe we'll have better luck this time? Eh, blast prot. Yeah, sure, why not? Ah, it'll do for now. All right, all of our netherite scrap is done smelting. So let's go ahead and smelt that all up into our netherite ingots. And we're gonna go ahead and upgrade all of our tools here. Sword and ax. And now for the thing that I have never done in my entire life. Let's upgrade all of my armor to netherite. And here's the last piece. There we go. Ooh, new achievement, sweet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for a look that you, and for that matter, I have never seen before. Boots, legs, chest plate, and helmet. Look at that. I actually kind of look pretty dumb. But we are as protected as we can be, minus the enchantments now. So this is going to be a new look to get used to. And um, not going to lie, as soon as I get an elytra, the chest piece is coming off. And probably the helmet too. But, um, you know, details. But we still have one netherite ingot left. And guess what that is for? That's right, we are upgrading our diamond hoe to a netherite hoe. That way we can get the achievement. And also, we are going to be, you know, planting a lot of crops soon. Seriously, my character looks really dumb in netherite. But we're gonna pop that on back into the chest here, and that really looks like a stone hoe, so I'm gonna have to make sure I don't throw that out by accident. But, objective number two, complete. 
And with that, I moved on to my next objective, which was to get all the Wither Skeleton Skulls that I needed for the Wither Fight. Now, my fortress that I had before wasn't very good, so I explored a little bit in the nether and found a better one over a lava lake with lots of wither skeletons spawning, and I spent quite a bit of time there, but I didn't include a lot of that footage because no one likes watching nether footage, and it sucks especially when you're in a nether fortress and everything is really dark. So I've included a few scenes of me killing wither skeletons and magma cubes, getting smacked a little bit, and then eventually finding all of the wither skulls that we needed. Took a little bit of time, but we got our skulls now, one in each hand and one atop my head. Now my dilemma, do I cheese it or do I fight it legit on the surface? I'm not too sure, hmm, I can't decide. Maybe I do fight it on the surface? Because I don't really want to cheese it. I mean, it could be a fun fight on the surface, it could be interesting, I mean, who knows, maybe it'll be fun. Oh, huh. How'd that happen? Eh, guess he just died. Eh, oh well, good riddance. Uh, no. <laughs> I can't believe I survived that. Oh, that's what I get for being cheeky. But as I wiped the sweat off my brow from that close encounter, um, yeah, I did decide to cheese it. I've fought the wither so many times that, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted to get it done and over with, that way I can get to harvesting the resources I need for my build, because that is the main focus of this series, is the builds. The hardcore stuff is fun, but at heart, I am a builder. And also, I really did not expect that cave to open up and him to get stuck in the top there. Oh man, that scared me for a second when he didn't come back down. And I guess, <laughs> I guess other than almost dying, my punishment for being cheeky is, uh, I saw him blow up some diamonds. It was, it was sad. Also, we really need to get rid of this bread ASAP. Oh my god, there's three children! Never mind, there's four children! What the heck? Being chased by the hobbits! Oh, and Gandalf's here to help them out! Ah, I just want to go home and make my beacon before I have another close encounter. Run away! Alright, we'll just toss the nether star- Oh my god, I wasn't wearing my helmet that entire fight. No wonder I almost died. Actually, you know what? We do actually have all the stuff we need to make our beacon, I think. Do we have, yes we do, we have just enough obsidian. And with that along the bottom, this little glass hat here, and the nether star in the middle, here we have it. Our first beacon. And that means we can actually start collecting the resources we need to start with our bridge. So I kind of forgot one very important thing about our beacon. We have no base. So we're gonna go repair up our pickaxe and see if we can't find some materials to do that because I do not have enough iron, gold, or emeralds, or all three combined even for that matter, to make a full beacon base and we need that for haste too. Come to think of it, we also need efficiency 5 on our pickaxe, so um, yeah we're gonna need an efficiency 4 book. Actually I'm pretty sure there's one in the stronghold, we can double check that after we repair our pickaxe. I think if we go up here, aha, aha. Aha! Well friends, the beacon has been placed and we have been collecting a bunch of stone. As you may have noticed from the last scene, we placed the beacon on stream and finished the beacon base there, so you know, make sure you're following on my Twitch, just in case I do stuff like that on stream rather than in the video. But behind us here, you'll see that we have a bunch of stone collected up just over a double chest, but that's nowhere close to enough, so we're gonna continue collecting that a bit later. But for now, we gotta keep going on our checklist. If you recall our list from the beginning of the episode, we have checked quite a few things off. We have done our nether tunnel, so that is check. We have gotten netherite tools and armor, so that is checked. We've gotten our beacon, so we've fought a bunch of withers and everything, that is check. So our next thing on the list before we can start our bridge to this island is we need an elytra just in case we fall, you know, straight into the void. We want to be able to fly back up rather than, you know, fall to our demise. So we got to go exploring for end cities, but there's one thing that we got to do before that. Unfortunately, my armor is taking quite a beating. My chest plate is almost broken, but my helmet is at full, and that's because I do actually have a mending villager over in the village that we found in the first episode. And I'm not talking about the one that we settled in. 
I'm talking about the one that is up there. I've got a villager that trades mending for 10 emeralds, but um, I don't have 10 emeralds. So uh, we got to do a little bit of trading. And I know I have this guy down here that I got the Feather Falling 2 books from that I can get some emeralds with paper for. But that doesn't quite give me enough. And come to think of it, I didn't bring a book with me either. So you are our unlucky victim today. And we'll just get rid of that. And then up there, I think there's a dude that buys carrots. So we'll harvest this crop and head up there and hope that we can get two more emeralds off that guy. And we gotta keep our eye out for a few sugarcane along the way too. Aha! And yoink! And craft, and buy, and trade. And there we go, we now have mending on our chest plate. So we just gotta go repair that up, get a few items together, and then we can go end busting for a bit. Alright, we're all repaired up. I've done my chest plate, I've topped off my bow and my pickaxe, so we should have everything we need for the foreseeable future. I've also got a bunch of blocks, a water bucket, and some shields on me, so it is time to head into the end. I've actually already raided this end city here, that's where I got the three shulker boxes I already have from. And, uh, yeah, there was pretty much nothing over there. So, we got to pearl over to this island here, and start running around and looking for another end city. Preferably one with a ship. Now, I'm really hoping that we get lucky with this, because I'd like to be able to just run back across this island and go back to where I live, rather than having to find an exit portal, because I'm generally extremely unlucky with finding exits. So, let's cross our fingers for good luck. Oh boy, it's time to do my least favorite thing in Minecraft. Bridging over the void without an elytra or a second life. Ah, sad stumpy end city. We are just out here looking for an elytra. We will go back and loot any other end cities when we have one. That way we can, you know, do it a little faster. Well, there's an exit point, but no city. And another exit point, but still no city. And there's a third one. We're a couple thousand blocks out and I've still seen nothing. Maybe this island will bring me better luck. Or I'll find a fifth exit point. I feel like the game's trying to tell me something. Oh, is that what I think it is? It's an end city. Does it have a ship though? There it is, guys. There's the ship. We're going. We're going. And of course, it's on another island. We need some more blocks. All right, we are connected up. Let's get into this end city. For the sake of time, we're going to cut out most of the end city raid, but it's pretty much all your standard stuff. We went in the front door, we killed a bunch of shulkers, and we made our way up the tower. Found a couple of those really big rooms that have shulkers lining the walls. Killed all of them, grabbed all their shulkers, and then we started making our way to the ship. Really, the only reason that I came to the end city in the first place was for the elytra. The shulkers are just a nice bonus. But we bridged our way over to the ship, and we got what we were looking for. But now, for the real reason we came here. The item frame. Oh, uh, and the elytra. You ready for this, guys? Boom! I can fly! Wee! There we have it, guys. We got our first elytra, and like I said, it wasn't too hard to find either. And along the way, we did manage to pick up quite a few goodies, too, since we only raided one end city. 30 shulker shells without the double looting thing? Not too bad, in my opinion. I will take that. That's 15 shulkers. And we got a few backup uh, diamond gear in case ours break or something like that, or if we want to throw it on armor stands. And we got this here, which is very important because now we can go buy a mending book. Because we can't let our shiny new elytra be breaking on us. We should also grab any sugarcane that we find along the way, because I don't have much sugarcane or much gunpowder, so my rockets are going to be far and few. Which means that at least until I have a sugarcane and gunpowder farm, this elytra will only be used for emergencies, so if I fall into the void and need to get myself out of that sticky situation. And that's another item checked off our list too, so we really only have one more thing on the list for today. And what day are we on, out of curiosity? 189. There is a possibility that the next task will actually take us straight past day 200, because we still have to gather a bunch of resources to be able to do it. So I think this is the perfect time to jump into a time lapse for the first time in this episode and gather up all the stone we need. Let's do it.
There we go. We have grinded our way to day 199. And we have all the stone we should need to do this. Um, I'm not going to promise that, though. We might have to go collect more halfway through. I don't know how much this is actually going to take. But also, for anyone who has noticed, I have been slowly working on the island uh, just between clips and also on stream. So we have a wheat field over there, which I think you guys have seen already. And we have another little enclosure over here, which is going to be for animals once we drag them through the end uh, over to here. So we're just going to throw a fence gate on the front there, and that's where I'm going to store the animals. But we have collected a ton of stone. We have four doubles right here. And we have another two and a bit doubles over here on the main island here. Figured we might as well have some here since this is where our starting point is going to be, right at this arrow over here. So we are going to make this out of stone brick. That's why I wanted all this to be stone. And also, if I have any left over, I can just use it on my island terraforming. And I do have a little bit of a plan for how I want to do this, because like I said before, this isn't just going to be a boring flat bridge or anything like that. It's going to be how it has to start, because I definitely do not have the resources to make it the way I want to. But the more important thing is I do not have the time in this episode to do things the way I'd like to. So we're just going to do a flat bridge for now. That's enough to get our animals and our villagers over to our islands here. And over time, we will slowly work on the bridge the way I want it to look. And it has just ticked over to day 200, so happy 200 to us. And for the first time, let's don our wings and get this rolling with a bit of a time lapse. Let's do it. And time lapse failure in 3, 2, 1. Yeah, I forgot to hit record. Sorry. This right here is one very long bridge. It spans almost a thousand blocks in this direction. And then when we finally get to the end of where it goes in this direction, it goes another 300 blocks in that direction to the main end island. But we have the base for it down. It's just a layer of stone brick right now. And they are full blocks, so I had to make sure it was completely lit up. Otherwise, this would be an Enderman spawning frenzy. But it is done. And I've got to say, the tower looks really cool coming across this bridge. But just to make this bridge here alone, and this is only one layer thick, it took all of our stone from the main end island, plus a chest and a half of stone from the tower over here. So all in all, that's, what, like four double chests of stone just for one layer of this platform? And trust me, when it's done, this is not only going to be one layer thick. But unless you guys have been in my streams, you guys don't exactly know the scale of how big this is actually going to be. So, I could just jump into my creative world and show you, but where would the fun be in that? Instead, I'm going to build part of it, because the bridge that's going across to the main end island isn't just going to be there. It's going to be our bridge system throughout our entire base, since we're going to be jumping from end island to end island to end island to make our different biomes. So, you may notice that I have another set of walls marked out over here, and this is where our bridge from this island to that island is going to be. And I'm going to have it connect up to the tower here, because I think that'll be really cool. And that actually lines up perfectly with the floors of the tower, so that'll give us a good entry point onto this bridge. And keep in mind, this is going to be a fairly short bridge, because it only has to go from there to there, which is, what, maybe like 50 blocks at most? Probably not even. But we're going to keep track of how much stone and deep slate we use, because yes, there is deep slate in this design as well. And we'll see how much that actually takes, because we're going to have to do that times, like... 20 or 30 going over to the main end island but with that being said i want to show you what i have designed because i'm really excited to build it and with that we're going to jump into our third and final time lapse for this episode let's do it
that is looking pretty cool. So this is the bridge design that we're going to have going all the way across our island systems and also all the way back to the end island. So now you can appreciate how many blocks and how much time this is going to take to do. But we're going to do it anyways. But obviously that will take time and resources, so it's something we'll work on between episodes and on stream most likely. Not necessarily dedicate a full episode to. But this reaches down into the void, eventually we're going to have little end islands underneath the little feet there. Probably not all the way back to the end island, but at least for the ones over here. Then along the top we do have a water system, so we can use a boat to get between our islands really fast if we want. Or down here at the main level of the island you can also just walk straight across. I could talk about my plans for this series all day, but unfortunately we have run out of time. Actually we ran out of time like 5 minutes ago, but um, I kept going anyways. So sorry for the long episode, but we got a lot done today, and it allows us to move forward in our series. So next episode we can start moving stuff over to the island, and we can actually get started on some serious work. But thank you everyone for watching, if you did like this video make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't. This episode took over 30 hours to record plus editing time so a lot of work went into this episode and if you appreciate that work and you like the episode make sure you let me know down in the comments below. But I will see you again in the next episode where we'll be working on moving stuff over to this island. Bye bye